Joining us now is a man that is inspirational, an incredible athlete, a Pittsburgh Steeler. The story back to the gridiron is going to be one that people are going to talk about hundreds and hundreds of years from now in the game of football. Ohio State All-American, Pro Bowler in the NFL, linebacker, Ryan Shazier. Ryan. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, right now, you're in the process of bouncing back after the very unfortunate injury that happened. Was it his spine, neck? What exactly was it? So it was a spine contusion. I mean, spine, uh, spine concussion. Spinal. Con oh, it was a spinal concussion. So basically, like you know, when guys get concussions on the head, I pretty much got it on my spine. So it's pretty much like a bruise on your spine, and uh, it, it kind of limit the the nerves that run down to the rest of your body. So. So you come into the NFL. You're this incredibly fast linebacker. You cover sideline to sideline. You make a couple of Pro Bowls. Everything is going good, and then the hit happens. Yeah, man. And immediate. Did you know immediately that something? Yeah, immediately I knew something was wrong. So I, I hit a guy. I like turn over. I, I like kind of like blacked out for like a tad second. It wasn't nothing crazy. And then I just I like try to move and I couldn't move. And I felt like a like a like kind of a burning sensation in my back. And I was just like, man, this isn't right. And I just like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll come. You know? Because you see guys, like, like for instance, I was teammate with, uh, teammates with Austin Colley. He got laid out in Philadelphia. He wasn't moving on the field. And the entire place, every, you could hear a pin drop. Everybody's heart drops. That situation happened. I, never, I always wondered what it was like as the the player. Yeah. And I, the, the first thought for you had to be like, oh, damn. This yeah. is everything that I ever imagined. From that point on, though, you have done nothing but inspire and bounce back who was there like a partner in that or was that your own mental like as soon so, as it happened it's like yo i'm back i'm yeah, coming so back as, as soon as it happened i was i was already like hey i'm gonna get better like i honestly like not until like two months later or like a month and a half later i really realized like yo i'm really messed up you know like i just i was always like i'm gonna get better i'm gonna get better it's, it's like it was good. a knee surgery or something yeah. like this and i'll just rehab it we'll do the surgery i'll yeah. be back yeah, yeah. so and um and I just always had a positive mindset. You know, my family they was all they was all really hurting, but they all stayed really strong. You know, they never nobody ever let me see them cry. You know, they, they like I might have cried a few times, but uh, my first time crying was literally like almost like a month and a half, two months out. You know, like I didn't, and it was because like I had got really sick, and and I ended up crying because I got really sick, and like I. Like my cousin that, that looks up to me, he was in the hotel room and I like kind of, and I couldn't really move. So like I threw up, but I couldn't like cover myself. Mm -hmm. So I like almost threw up on myself. And it was like, damn, I look and I embarrassed myself in front of my cousin that looks up to me. So I was like, that, that made me cry. You You're know being a little hard on yourself. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, unbelievably hard on yourself. Yeah. And I think by the way, the same reason and the same mindset that you've had on your comeback here is what made you an incredible football mm -hmm. player. Yeah. Just in between the ears, a mentally very strong guy. What is your, what, if you had to say, what makes you a, an incredible football player? What makes you tough to uh, prepare for or anything like that? Honestly, uh, I already know, like, I'm truly God gifted when it comes to speed. Let's go! <laughs> the speed and things like that, but I don't try to, like, just lean on that a lot of guys they're like hey man like you i have a strong leg i'm leaning on that but yep. at the end of the day like you still had to know like you still had to practice you yep. still had to study and it's a lot of guys they're like hey i'm super fast i'm gonna run past anybody i'm super strong i can just push anybody and they just lean on that and at the end of the day like i knew i can lean on that but i was like man how about i actually learn this position of linebacker learn how like to put everybody in my defense in the right position to make plays and then me knowing that and me knowing like hey if i put the defense in the right position and this guy screws up, I know how to cover it. You know, instead of me like, yep. hey, let me just run around and mm -hmm. make plays. And and once I start doing that, I understand I start making way more plays than I even imagined. You That's know, so. awesome. That's the difference between NFL and college, by the way. Yeah. NFL, it's a profession. You got time to study that thing. And they also have a lot of mentors. In the Pittsburgh locker room, yeah. who are some people that you've befriended that, uh, that have really, I mean, you're a leader of the whole city of Pittsburgh right now, mm -hmm. not just in the locker room, but who are some people who helped you through this whole thing in the locker room? So it's kind of cool because uh, Coach Tomlin was actually one of them, one of them that really helped me out a lot because I remember was like I, I showed Coach Tomlin my goals and like one of my goals was to have like ten interceptions and uh and he was like he was like Ryan honestly all your goals are attainable and he was like but the thing is he was like if you just really uh focus on like trying to do what's best for the defense and like always putting the defense in the best position because like I'll make checks and things like that he's like all your plays are gonna come don't worry but he was like don't over here just try to focus on numbers you making your yeah. own yes he's like because 
the the year I got hurt, I had three picks already, but I dropped four. Like <laughs> you know, so that that was seven, and I still had about happened? four or five games. What? Left. How do you drop them? Hey man, Yo, I'm, you I'm already. Big I, mitts. Hey, okay. like, sure. what happened? You got, you got huge mitts. <laughs> yeah, so uh, a few of them, it was like literally like. All I see is green like I'm on a golf course. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, like, you know, so when you're thinking of that, you, that's how you end up dropping them, you know. So uh, I had a few of those. And, and then, honestly, like some of the older heads, you know, like Mike Mitchell, when he was there for me, you know, he's a coach now. He helped me out when it came to film study. Will Allen, he mm -hmm. was there before me. He, he helped me with film study. And, you know, and I, and I always just went to coaches and I was like, hey, Coach, uh, uh, Coach Munchuk, uh, what do offensive linemen not like to go against? Like, yeah, you yeah. Know, like, Good idea, by the way. Yeah, like coach, like I go to coach, or I go to Ben. Like, hey Ben, where like when you playing quarterback, like what kind of linebacker? Bothers How's your you? relationship with Ben? I feel like me and Ben have a decent relationship. I can talk to him about certain things. Ben, it, the Pittsburgh Steelers locker room is such an interesting one. It's an interesting one. There's so much talent. Every year the Steelers are good. That's mm -hmm. just the way it goes. Every single year the Steelers are good. There's so much talent in there, and in the NFL you're dealing with a lot of things outside of just the football game. You got a lot of personalities. You got a lot of egos. You got a lot happening. The Steelers have been a controversial place for a while. Ben Roethlisberger sometimes feeds into that. It's nice to hear that he's been a good teammate to you. That's a huge deal. Yeah, uh, especially it was like my second year or whatever, and I was like, hey Ben, like when you felt like you became a leader and. And you know, like, cause I knew, like, I was the playmaker on the defense at the time, even in my second year. Yep. I knew I was a playmaker, Absolutely. and I was like, "Hey, man, how, what, like, what made you become a leader?" Cause like, I'm not trying to force it. I'm not trying to be like, yep. "Hey, I'm the leader." Cause when you're saying that, you're not a leader. Hey, that, by the way, those dudes are the <laughs> fucking worst. <laughs> those dudes. Is there anyone the, like that? In the as soon as the camera, you don't do that. that. <laughs> oh, as soon that. as yeah. the camera comes on, they start the screaming, the hyping, yeah. they're eating W's. I agree. Yeah. I, <laughs> I agree. I'm on your. side. Yeah, so like, man, it's like, I like, I'll talk to the team, and and a lot of times they follow who who's playing. Like, yep. mm -hmm. at the end of the day, some some guys are they don't want to be a leader, you know, like like Charles Barkley. I'm not a role model, but at the end of the day, like I I knew like, I had a voice, and guys would listen. So I was like, hey man, how, when you felt you became a leader, you know, and he was like, man, off of your play, and then he would teach me a few things, and and he's and then Coach Tomlin also told me he was like, guys will start listening to you. Once they see you, if they see you working, like they see you coming in the facility at 6 a.m. Yep. and they're not even up yet. You earn it. You earn it. Yeah. You know, like if I say, hey, running this hole, they be like, yeah, Ryan know what he's doing. I'm running the hole. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Instead of like, hey, I'm walking into the facility at 9 o'clock and the meeting starts at 9 o'clock. Hey, running this hole. No, you. Hey, you, motherfucker, you don't even know, man. <laughs> That's how you get here after me, bro. <laughs> yeah, you're 100% right. You got to earn that title. Yeah, yeah you know, so uh, I think that really helped out a lot. Awesome. Right. Diggs, by the way, these two super yeah, yeah. fans. I appreciate we, you, we miss you a lot. We really do. Um, so now, like during the season, are you still in meeting rooms and coaching people on the sidelines and stuff like that during the week, or is it more just rehab stuff like that? Yeah, so uh, I do a combination of both. So uh, on Tuesdays, like when coaches get in there and bringing down things, mm -hmm. I actually be in like the coaches' meeting, learning from them, breaking down film yeah, with yeah. them, and actually see how they diagnose and, and uh, other teams, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, oh, this is gonna like, make you a better player, probably. Yeah. yeah. So like once I come back, it's like I already know what the coaches are looking mm -hmm. for, and then uh, a lot of times. I can see the game plan, and then when I go back to my teammates, I can talk to them and be like, hey, man, this is what coaches are thinking. Like, because a coach, a lot of coaches will give you a game plan, but every every dude on the field, the coach can't give them all of it. Yeah, because yeah. some guys is like, man, it's like you just feeling me with too much information. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll be in there and I understand ways to break it down to them. Because I can understand it just like a coach, but I, sometimes I want to. I can explain it to guys so it, it seems a lot easier you, for them. Will you be a coach one day? Uh, I definitely feel like I could be a coach one day, but sometimes, man. Too many like, hours, bro. Yeah, not, not even the hours because I was kind of already working those hours when I was playing. But No way you're sleeping at the office. <laughs> no, 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 not sleeping at the office. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I definitely had to go home. I definitely had to go home. But, like, so I'll get in there. Like, I used to work out at 4, four like, 4.45 in the morning. Holy shit. And then shit. get to facility at 6. And then, like, our meetings don't start till 9. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm already three hours in before everybody else watching film. And, like, the Kobe Bryant fan. Famous quote: If I work, if I work four hours a day and you work two, I'm gonna be so far ahead of you, you never gonna catch up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I used to watch film. So like now, when it comes to breaking down, I feel like I could be a coach. The only thing that gets me about being a coach is like, 
like knuckleheads when I'm like, hey man, running this hole, man, I think this hole is better. No, bro, running this hole. <laughs> nah, I, I like my way better, and then like they way don't fucking work. <laughs> That's kind yeah. of the way. That's coaching in a nutshell. Yeah, right there, coaching actually. in a nutshell. So like, I, I, I I'm like. I'm kind of pro, uh, uh, perfectionist when it comes to football, man. I love football. So, like, when guys don't really study and then, like, you tell them, like, what you know and they feel like, man, I'm still going to try my way and you don't even know what you're Yeah, man, doing. I was up at 4 a.m. this morning. You know when you were, <laughs> you were just getting in this morning? I was up studying. Why don't right. you just listen to my mother? Yeah, so that's the, that's the one thing about me, like, when it comes to coaching. Like, I love coaching, but, like, I just want to make sure, like, when I'm coaching, I'm, I'm trying to tell right you guys group. what to do. Like, I want to make sure I have the right group because you can end up with a bunch of knuckleheads and that can, like, drive you fucking crazy. Well, it's bro. cancer. That's, that's literally a cancer to the locker room is whenever you have people that don't want to listen to things. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's literally the way things go. Yeah. Good group is yeah. something that isn't talked about enough. Is uh, anyone giving you a hard time now that you're on both sides of the ball? You've oh, played, yeah. you're coaching now, you try and give some guys advice. Does anyone give you a hard time? Even jokingly, just yeah, like... like hey. some, oh. guys, some guys don't like... You see like Vince giving you a hard yeah, time. Yeah, nah, Vince don't give me a hard time. He, uh, he definitely listens, but uh, at the end of the day, it's just like, for instance, like you'll tell a guy, hey, a, uh, don't 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 look at the receivers like try to read the quarterback a little bit and then like this quarterback for instance he's gonna look you off but at the end of the day he's not actually going there like his first read he's gonna go over here but he's always coming back over here and like some of them like they'll constantly just look at the receiver and I'm like hey bro all right you don't want to catch a pick right? <laughs> <laughs> like, so like it's, it's, it, I'll just do that type of stuff or like I'll be like hey hey let's hit the jugs you know mm-hmm. and, and uh, uh, did you see in Cleveland that's a punishment to go get extra catches you probably didn't see it at Hard Knocks Hugh Jackson that's a that's a punishment how's that punishment that's <laughs> I I I knew all that I needed to know about the way that Cleveland Browns team was running whenever they said, all right, time to punish a guy. you got to yeah, go catch 30 like balls. only like 30 jugs, too. 30 yeah. balls on the jugs. Yeah, I'm like, no, yo, that is not a punishment. That's punish. not a punishment. Like, you know, I play a linebacker, and every day I usually hit the jugs. Like, Hell yeah. At least 30 balls. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm not catching 100 balls. Yeah, I'm not AB. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But every day, like, I catch 30 balls, and then guys are like, man, if you can catch, you can catch. I'm like, all right, bro. All right, go out there and catch. All right, I haven't seen you catch this many picks. Like, <laughs> You know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and you had ten picks on your mind too. You got to get those you like hands. new look. Yeah, I was about to ask. Yeah, that mustache yeah, is yeah, wild. Mustache. Yeah, hey, man. I, honestly, you know, when you go to the uh, Caribbean for a while, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, you, you run into some pirates. That's good. <laughs> uh, that's good. I think he needed it. he needed to get away for a little bit. Yeah, no, yeah. I think he, him, and his family had a good time. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, hey, man, at the end of the day, like Ab's my brother, so I just want to want to be happy. And Me he, too. And, he, and he's happy, man. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm cool. With whatever uh, dude he's rocking, man. Like, I mean, you want him to stay, right? Yeah, definitely. Want him to stay. Yeah, I man. think anybody yeah, yeah, would yeah. like the best yeah, yeah, I get, yeah, I definitely want him to stay, but hey, man, I want him to be happy. You know, so yep. mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if, if he's with us, he's with us. If he's not, he's not, but I, I want him to be happy. All right, man. so you have fur on right now in an iced out bracelet. For those watch- that are listening, you can't see it. Know that it's one of the greatest <laughs> accessories I've seen in a long time. When did you pull the trigger on this? Have you always been a jewelry guy? I, I had got some jewelry my, uh, when I first got drafted, but I actually got this one my first Pro Bowl because it was like a gift to myself. You yeah, you deserved it. <laughs> hey, man, you deserved and, that. And I, I got this jacket because... Uh, when when I was in goddamn Pittsburgh, it was negative twenty five. Two days ago, <laughs> yeah. two days ago. So when I flew here, I actually flew with this jacket. And I was like, hey, man, it might be a little cool wherever I go. Yeah, yeah you like, do. Yeah, you so, look good. It yeah, looks maybe. good. Uh, what is the target date for? Is there? Are they giving you any responses like, hey, we think you'll be able to jog by this point. We we'll think you'll be able to run by this point. Like, is there any of that right now? Or so is it I'm gonna be honest. Uh, like when I first started, I didn't even think I would walk. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, you just walked your ass up these steps here. <laughs> too you came in I'm like yo this motherfucking guy I can barely make it up those steps right now yeah so uh, they didn't think I could walk but I've been going to my doctors and they've been they saying like Ryan like you're passing every every step we ask you to have you pass it with flying colors and they basically told me hey uh, just keep working and we're going to come back at this at this another date and we're going to see where you're at but they say just keep working on your strengthening conditioning and uh, endurance and, and the more your endurance get better the more your conditioning gets better and it's like man all doors are open like, let's go yeah, so. are you going to keep signing one year deals is that what, how it was is, did you guys you sign a one year deal this year or? Uh, so like the, the, my agent because you have to be on, a, on the team or whatever yeah, I have to be on the team but yeah my agent and the studs really haven't finalized nothing yeah, yet, yeah, yeah. so I, I well, I just let them handle that for Wait, right are now. you going to be a free agent? I'll break news. <laughs> I will break news. Ryan Chazier is about to be a free agent. No, the Roonies aren't letting him get out. Well, uh, you're. I think this, I don't want to call it a break from playing, but yeah, it yeah. is kind of a break from playing. 
your brain is going to be that of a vet, a super vet, because now you're into film. That's all. Whenever you, whenever you can't do one thing, you obviously pick it up in another mm-hmm. thing. So watching film and studying, as soon as your body's ready to go, I think you're going to be. I don't think there's going to be like a, oh, does he still got it thing. I think you're going to be an even better player than ever. In hindsight, the story is going to be one where yeah. you become a better football player through this whole thing. Yeah, I definitely think it's going to make me a better player in the moment. Uh, I step back on the field and I, I'm already going to evaluate and see what coaches are looking for and like what I was looking for and, and the thing is the, the the way I've been watching film is going to allow me to take less steps you know yep. like at the end of the day I, I, I want to be 4-3 again I told Coach Tom I was like I'm going to get healthy and he was like man all you got to do is be like 4-6 I'm cool <laughs> and, then, and I was like man you never know I might be like uh, the, uh, what, what, uh, rookie, of the year. rookie of the year <laughs> I might be uh, a 4-2 now you know you never know hey. so and if you have to throw the floater at the end, just fucking get the job done there, bro. I got you. I got you. <laughs> uh, so thankful you stopped by. Your story is not only inspiring Pittsburgh, but uh, everybody. Mm-hmm. It's really cool to watch you, man, because your climb to the top is not going to be an easy one. And I think everybody knows that. In every single step, not to stupid pun there, mm-hmm. along the way is is worthy of celebration. And we're celebrating with you, man. Yeah, thank Excited you Excited so for you. Thank Hopefully you. you get another goddamn Pro Bowl bracelet right around the corner, man. I'm pulling <laughs> hard for that. Hey, yeah, man. I'm going to get one. Let's go. Yeah. Appreciate you, brother. Ryan Shazier. What a legend. Thank you.